Hello and welcome to a series of videos on networking, starting with network topologies. So if you have a look over here, you can see lots of examples of network topologies on this screen. Uh, the ones we're going to be concentrating on are the mesh network topology and the star network topology because they're the most important ones at this level. So main point to start with is that all networks work in essentially the same way. You're going to have some sort of transmission medium, whether it's fiber optic cable, uh, wireless network, Ethernet cables that are connecting the devices together. And you're going to be sending data to each device, which is going to be located by some sort of addressing system. However, networks can be laid out in different patterns. And this layout or pattern is what we call the topology. And the network topology chosen will affect the cost and performance of the network. A little vocabulary note, uh, all the devices connected to a network are what we call a node. And that can be a workstation, a tablet, a desktop, a laptop, a printer. Any sort of device connected to a network is called a node. So the first type of topology we're going to study is a star network. And just having a quick look at this picture, you're going to be able to see why it's called a star network. Because when you have this sort of broad conceptual overview, it does very much look like a star. All the devices are connected to the central hub or switch. And it doesn't matter if you're talking about your laptop, your workstation, your desktop. Every device connects to the central hub. And that can include our wireless devices as well when we're using a wireless access point. This is the type of network that we find in homes and offices uh, all over the world. It's very common. So again, that's, those are the, the main points. Again, it's a common network topology. Everything is connected to the central point and it's used very frequently around the world. And because everything is connected through to this central point, it has a lot of advantages as over some of the older network topologies, such as a ring topology or a bus topology. Each node has its own connection to the center, so it's very fast. If there is a fault in one of the links or one of the nodes, it's not going to affect the rest of the network, so it's very reliable. Because each node has its own dedicated path to the central hub or switch, you're not going to get a lot of data collisions. And that's when packets are sent in the same time and collide as they move across the transmission medium. Star networks are also really scalable. Uh, if a computer breaks down, you can take it off, uh, repair it, fix it, add it back on again. You can add a new con a network connection really easily. So think about it when you're at home. Uh, you buy a new, a new device, a new tablet. You can connect it through to your network really quickly. It's all operating directly through to the central switch. It's not having to go through any other paths. So you can add and remove nodes really quickly. It's great for network management. Everything can be done centrally. It's very convenient for the management. Security is also a really good feature as well. Uh, the nodes can't all interact with each other. They all need to go through this central point. So you can install a firewall, you can monitor all the network transmission, you can stop unauthorized contact between any of the nodes. Uh, really good for security as well. Again, with all networking, you've really got to think about the physical reality, and that can cause some disadvantages. When you're first set setting up your star network, you're going to have to lay cables through floors, through ceilings, through walls. You have to dig holes, drill holes, really work out the infrastructure and how it's all going to work. That takes time, that costs money, can be a problem. And again, of course, if that central hub or switch goes down in the middle, the whole network's going to go down. Uh, I used to work for a business that had a local area network set up. All, everything was connected through a central switch. The switches were often really cheap, I think possibly secondhand. They broke quite a lot. When that happened, nobody could access the internet. Nobody could access the central file storage. It was a big problem. Let's have a look at a mesh network. We've got the full mesh network here. We've got a partial network, partial mesh network here. And already you should be able to kind of see the difference between the full and the partial mesh network and how these both differ from the star network topology that we studied before. So you can see 
with the fully meshed network, every single node is connected to every other node. With a partial mesh network, some of the nodes are connected in a fully mesh network, but other nodes are only connected to one or two other nodes on the network. And that does have different strengths and advantages for both cases. The main thing about a partial or fully mesh network is that there are multiple paths between nodes to send your data. Uh, the nodes can talk directly to each other. You don't require any central point to control the transmission of the data. The full mesh network, again, every node has a circuit connecting it to every other node. With a partial mesh network, some of the nodes are organized in this way, but others might be just connected to one or two others on the network. When information and data is sent across a mesh network, it might be sent by routing it along a suitable available pathway. If one of those particular pathways is blocked by a failure somewhere along the route, there's something called self-healing, where a special software algorithm is used to reroute the message through a new route to make sure it gets to the right destination. This sort of flexibility ensures that a mesh network is generally very reliable. It would require a lot of nodes to go offline before you could really disrupt it, especially a fully mesh network. Because you've got all these alternative points, there's no single point of failure. It's difficult to bring down the network, which can be really advantageous when reliability is what you're looking for. Disadvantage is really about cost, especially when we're looking at a wired network. A fully meshed wired network is really expensive. Think about a computer lab in a school where you've got 30 computers. Every computer needs to be connected to every other computer. That's a lot of cabling. Uh, because you've got all those cables coming into each computer, you're going to need a switch for every computer. Again, that cost is going to mount up really quickly. If you're going to be looking at a mesh network, whether full or partial, it's probably better to think about doing it wirelessly, because then you don't need the same sort of cabling and switch overhead, and it can be a lot cheaper to arrange, while still having that sort of reliability that is crucial with mesh networks. Let's just take a look at an example here. We've got an example of a mesh network, and most of the computers on this network are fully meshed together. And that's the ones on the left-hand side here. The blue and the yellow computers are all connected to each other. However, we've got a red computer, and it's much further away. Uh, but because it's part of a mesh network, it can still send its signal through to the nearest blue computer, and that signal can then propagate across the network to where it needs to go. So that means you can get a really good range with your wireless network. You can still get the reliability, and everything can connect together nicely. So as I said, there are some other older types of network. We've got a bus network topology and a ring network topology. Uh, bus network topology, well, you can kind of see why it's called a bus network. Uh, you've got that central row, that central backbone across the middle. All the different computers are connect to it, connected to it like bus stops on the road. Problem is, it's not very reliable. Any sort of problem with that backbone, none of the computers can work together. Ring network is even more simple. Any sort of computer goes down, any sort of glitch, the whole network doesn't work. Nothing can transmit data across the network. So nowadays, we don't really think about bus topologies or ring topologies. They're really part of the history of networking, uh, part of the old theory. You're really only going to have to think about these when you're going to talk about the advantages of the star network topology and the mesh network topology. Because that's really what networking is all about. You're going to use a combination of star networks, uh, mesh networks, whatever you need to bring the flexibility to your network. You're never really going to use a bus network or ring topology anymore. In fact, if you went to your networking services or IT services and said, hey, I'd like a ring network installed, they're probably going to look at you like you're crazy. So these are ancient history. They've got lots of problems with them. We're not using them anymore. It's really all about the star topology and the mesh topology now. All right, well, I think that'll be enough for me. Good luck and good night.